So we're going to draw some bond line structures from their IUPAC names. So the first thing you want to do is identify the parent chain. You want to draw the parent chain. That's the first thing you want to do. So the parent chain will be octane in this case, right? That's a parent alkane. So that is eight carbons. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is my parent chain. Now what this is telling me is that on carbon three, I have an ethyl group. So carbon one, two, three, I have an ethyl group. Now an ethyl, right? Remember, a methyl, a methyl is one branch, right? It's just a carbon, right? Which is a CH3. That is a methyl. An ethyl is actually one branch more, right? Because remember, methane CH4, right? Ethane is actually C2H6, right? Because you're adding, you're just basically adding a carbon. And as you add carbons, you also add hydrogen, but your hydrogen, hydrogen will actually increase by two. So methane is CH4, you know, ethane, C2H6, you know, and I'm saying propane, C3H8, right? So as substituent, right, ethane is going to have two carbons. So there's one carbon branch here, and then, is, then there's another carbon here. So this is one, two. Right. So as a substituent, this is how ethane looks. Right. And then propane will be one more branch. Right. And then, you know, octane, you know, you get the pentane will be five. Right. So you get the the, the, the idea how about this one. Two, two, four, four tetramethyl octane. Again, start with the parent chain. It's octane. So I'm going to draw my parent chain. So two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So this is octane. So let's read what it's saying. We know we have four methyl groups because this is tetra. Now it says on carbon two, there's actually two methyl groups. So basically, they're giving these two methyl groups a number. All right. So our, so on carbon two right here, we have one methyl group and two methyl groups. All right. So it says that you give each name, right? You give each, you know, substituent if they're on the same carbon a number. So two, two, four, four. Well, carbon one, two, well, carbon two, three, four. On carbon four, we actually have two methyl groups also. All right. So this is how the compound will look for that. And again, they're all they're doing is just giving, you know, the methyls. They're on the same carbon, you gotta give them, you gotta give both of them numbers. How about this one? 3-ethyl 2-5 dimethyl nonane. Well again, nonane is just nine carbons, so that's the first thing we're gonna do. Parent chain. So again, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? That will be nine carbons. Yes? So what this is telling me is that on carbon three, I have a ethyl group. So carbon one, two, three, I have a ethyl group. So this is a methyl. One more branch will give me an ethyl, all right? On carbon two, right? So what this is also telling me is that on carbon two, we have a methyl and also on carbon five. So on carbon two, I have a methyl group, right? So carbon one, two, three, four, five. This will be my other methyl group, right? And this will be the structure for that specific name. So again, identify your parent. The numbers will tell you what carbon those specific substituents are on. And again, the substituent goes by, you know, goes by methane, ethane, you know, propane, butane. The only thing you do as substituents, they now take on the form of YL, right? So instead of propane, it's now propyl, ethyl, right? And remember, your substituent goes by the amount of carbon. So on the substituent here, there's one, two carbons, right? Just for practice, 
right? We already said this is a structure, but you know, just for clarification, right? So if I had one more branch, say, say hypothetically, if I if I had one more branch theory, no, that will be propyl, right? Because now I have one, two, three carbons, right? Remember, three carbons correspond to propane, but as substituent, they take on that YL, which will be now propyl, right? So I could just erase this. And this will be the final structure of that compound.